Today is Easter. And I know this Easter is not quite like most Easter's. Usually we're all together and we're in our church clothes and we're excited and it's different. But you know what? We're still going to have a great time. Now, I know the reason most of you are excited is because of all the candy you get brought by this guy. We love this guy, don't we? Oh, we love the Easter Bunny. But let me ask you this, kids. Is the Easter Bunny and all the candy he brings, is that the most important thing about Easter? No, it's not, Bunny. I know, I know, it's not. But let me tell you guys, Easter is when we remember the biggest, most amazing, most wonderful thing that's ever happened when Jesus rose from the grave. See, what Jesus does is he turns everything upside down. He changes everything, and Easter is the number one example of that. Jesus spent his whole life putting others first. He lived a life of humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Now, that might seem a little bit upside down, right? I mean, like normally, we want our way. We want what's ours. We want things to go our way. We want to be first. We want all of that. But hey, you know what? With God's help, we can actually turn things upside down. You know, we can live with humility. We can decide to put others first like Jesus did. And we're going to talk today about the amazing way that Jesus did that, what he did for us. But you know what? First, let's do this. Let's tell God how awesome he is. Let's tell God how much we love him by having some time of praise and worship.
Well, again, guys, happy Easter, everyone. So glad that you could be with us to share this special day. I got my friend Audrey here. She's going to help me as I tell this story, and I'm so excited to share this story with you. Well, last week, we heard how the religious leaders of the time were trying to plot against Jesus to take him out to kill him. They didn't like the fact that Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. And for them, being right in following God was the most important thing. All of the rules that they thought about. And on top of this, they thought that the way that they followed God was right. And that was the only way. Well, they didn't like how Jesus was, was focusing that it was really about what God wants and how God wants us to love other people and serve other people. They thought it was all about them. And they didn't like that everybody was following Jesus instead of listening to them. And they tried to get rid of him. So Judas went behind Jesus' back and he met with the religious leaders and he turned Jesus over to them for 30 pieces of silver. And once the mob had arrested Jesus, all of his disciples, his best friends, they scattered everywhere because they were afraid that they were going to get arrested. A few of these guys, they followed Jesus, but from a distance. Peter and John, they hid in the shadows and, and they saw that Jesus was taken in to the high priest into this inner courtyard. Well, while they were there, one of this servant girls, she was on duty and she asked Peter this question. She said this, hey, you aren't one of the disciples too, are you? Well, Peter stared at her and he was afraid and he answered as quickly as he could. And he said, no, I, I, I'm not. That was his first denial. Meanwhile, inside the high priest was questioning Jesus, asking him all these questions, trying to trick him and catch him into a lie. But Jesus, he wouldn't fall for it. See, the high priest, he, he asked him about his teachings. He asked him about his followers and, and he kept questioning him. Well, back in the, in the outer courtyard, it was chilly and it was cold. And Peter stood by the fire and he was trying to warm himself up. And one of the other people standing around, they were in conversation and they turned to Peter and they said, hey, aren't you one of Jesus' followers? Aren't you one of his disciples? Well, Peter was still afraid. He was still worried about being arrested. And he said, no, I'm not. That was his second denial. Then a man glanced over and thought, hey, I recognize this guy, Peter. And, and, and he was actually related to the guy that Peter had chopped the ear off of in the garden. And he said, Peter, didn't I see you in the garden? And again, Peter said, no, that was his third denial. And right then the rooster crowed and Peter realized that he had done exactly what Jesus said. He had denied Jesus three times. Well, meanwhile, the leaders decided to take Jesus into the palace of the Roman governor Pilate. And it was Pilate's job to figure out if Jesus was guilty or if he was innocent of the charges. See, Pilate he was the governor, and the religious leaders wanted him to, to find Jesus guilty of all these crimes, even though Jesus hadn't done anything. Well, Pilate, he didn't want actually anything to do with the whole situation, and he told the priest, hey, take Jesus and judge him by your own law. But then the real truth came out, that Jesus hadn't actually done anything wrong. See, the leaders who wanted to take Jesus out, they explained, and they said, hey, by our laws, he hasn't done anything wrong. But by Roman law, he has. So Pilate questioned Jesus. And Jesus gave him straightforward answers. Like Pilate said, hey, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said this. He said, you say that I am king. And in fact, that's the reason I was born. I was born, I came into the world to be a witness to the truth. And everyone who is on the side of truth listens to me. Well, Pilate went back to the crowd out in the courtyard. And he was honest. He said, hey, I can't find anything wrong with this guy, Jesus. There's nothing to charge him with. But the crowd wouldn't have it. They yelled out, crucify him, crucify him. And they took him away. Pilate, all he did was shrug his shoulders and say, well, I guess there's nothing else I could do. Take him away to be put to death on the cross. Well, Jesus was then forced to, to carry his big, heavy cross up the side of a, a hill called Golgotha. And that's where the soldiers took Jesus' hands, they took his feet, and they nailed him to the cross. Over his head, they hung a, a piece of paper that said, King of the Jews. Well, Jesus' mother, Mary, and her sister, her sister Mary, uh, was there as well. And, and, and Jesus had said, John, I want you to take care of my mother. And as Jesus was hanging there, he said his last words, and he said, It is finished. And he died. Well, there was a man from Arimathea that was named 
Joseph and he went to Pilate and he said, hey, I, I, I'm a follower of Jesus. Can I have his body because I want to give him a proper burial? Well, Joseph took Jesus' body and there was a nearby tomb that had never been used. They took Jesus, they wrapped him up in the grave clothes, they put him inside and they rolled a big heavy stone over the entrance. Well, Mary, she wanted to go and, and, and she wanted to, to put some, some flowers there and give her respects to Jesus. And she noticed that when she went to the tomb, the, the stone that was humongous that took 10 guys to roll in front, it was gone. And she went inside and looked inside, and the tomb was empty. So Mary's first thought was this, that someone must have stolen the body. So she took off running. She ran to find Peter and John, and she said, hey, Jesus is missing. They've taken him, and I don't know where they put him. Well, all three of them ran back to the tomb, Peter, James, and John. They looked inside, and all the grave clothes that they had wrapped Jesus in, they were there, but there was no body. Well, Mary stood outside the tomb, and she was distraught, and she started crying, and through her tears, she looked up, and, and, and she saw two people were sitting inside. And they weren't actually people, but they were angels. And they were dressed in white. And they said, Mary, why are you crying? And, and she said, they've taken my Lord away. She then turned to look, and she saw what she thought was a gardener. And she said, you know, why, why have they taken my Lord and the gardener, who she thought was a gardener, turned her, and all of a sudden she realized it wasn't a gardener. It was Jesus. And look what Jesus said. Jesus said to her, he said, I am going to those who believe. Tell them I'm ascending to the Father, to your Father, to my God and your God. Well, Mary, she, she was so excited. She ran to tell everybody the news that Jesus was alive. She ran back and said, I have seen the Lord. Uh, he's alive. And she told them everything about the angels. And Jesus then appeared to his disciples many times. And what had happened was Jesus had conquered death. He had conquered sin. It wasn't a prank. It wasn't a magic trick. It was real. Jesus was alive. And the disciples, they finally saw Jesus because he would appear to them and they were so happy to see him. Because when Jesus died, he paid the ultimate price for my sin, for your sin, for all of our sins. He died for us. He died for our families. He died for everyone. And he was willing to to face death for us. He could have been kept in a tomb. And all of the promises in Scripture, they had all led up to this moment. And when Jesus rolled out of the grave, you know what he did? Just like this picture, he turned it upside down. Jesus put us first. Jesus came to be our Savior, and here's the thing. If we believe and we put our trust in Him, we can have a relationship with God that's going to last forever. And I want to pray with you guys right now because some of you may have said yes to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but there may be some of you that are watching right now that haven't, and it's so easy. All you have to do, the Bible says, is pray and say, Jesus, you're my Lord, you're my Savior. If you pray that and you believe it in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and that He rose again, the Bible says you're saved forever. So let's pray. God, we thank you for sending your only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. And we thank you, Jesus, that you laid down your life for us, but that you didn't stay dead, but that you rose again. God, we thank you for saving us. And if there's anyone out there that's watching this that has never said yes, yes to you, all they have to do is say, Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. Jesus, be my Savior. We thank you that one day we're going to be in heaven with you forever. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's watch this video. Dear God, this season has gone by so fast. We didn't even think we'd be able to go to the tournament and no one expected us to win it. But all the way, Coach reminded us that we're all in it together. And we did it together, all of us.
god, I pitched my first no-hitter. I couldn't believe it. But it wasn't just me. Danny got that short hop in the first inning and saved me. And of course, Tank stole that home run right at the fence. God, it surprised me when there was a reporter that wanted to talk to me about the no-hitter. But what surprised me even more was that she was forgetting about the rest of the team. It's like I had to go over the entire game for her to show her how great our whole team was. I told her about Tank. Tank thanked me, the way she does. I even told her about Danny's mom and how she always gets us water. She's part of the team too. You know God, Coach is right. Putting the team ahead of ourselves changes a lot of things. <laughs> I gotta go. Love, Seda. When we practice humility and put others first, you know what? It might cost us something, right? I mean, like, we might have to be patient, and, and we might have to wait our turn. We might have to give up something that we want. But you know what? In Jesus' case, it cost him everything, his whole life. And amazingly, he did all of that. His whole life led up to that one point. See, Jesus died on the cross so that you and I could be forgiven, so that we could have a relationship with God forever. But you know what? He didn't stay dead, right? He's alive. That's, that's why we celebrate Easter. He proved that he was stronger than sin, that he was stronger than death. Jesus, God's son, is alive. And the empty tomb is a perfect reminder that you can trust God no matter what. Whatever is in his word, because Jesus came back to life like he said he was going to, we can trust that the rest of the Bible is absolutely true. Because, see, the whole Bible is about God's plan to send Jesus to ultimately pay the price, to take our punishment to die on the cross for our sins and to beat death once and for all. So you know what, guys? Let's be like Jesus. Jesus put us first. So let's put others first. He turned the whole world upside down, and he can turn things around for you. Even in the middle of this crazy time that we're living in where, where you're stuck at home and you can't go out as much as you want to, you know what? You can still put your trust in Jesus. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed us today. I hope you watched it and had a great time with us. And you have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Love you guys.